Hey everyone, it's Yvonne Emil Elizondo from Silver Moon Astrology and Transpersonal Counseling, also known as Silver Moon Counseling. I am here because we are just on the cusp of this Mercury retrograde in Taurus. Yay! <laughs> uh, I, and I'm already feeling the effects of this. So, uh, like, technolo technology hates me. I know, we're not supposed to use negative words, right? Because then we manifest what we think. But technology really hates me. I hate to say this. Like, it really, really does. Like, I, I end up just messing things up technologically and then add a Mercury retrograde on top of that in my first house of Taurus. Okay, I'm Taurus rising, Taurus ascendant. So I'm already feeling the effects of this Mercury station right now as it's about to turn retrograde. So it's been stationed for a few days. Station means that from our perspective on Earth, it looks like the planet has kind of stopped in the horizon, right? Or it stopped. Um, of course, planets don't just stop and they don't go forward and backwards, right? They just go forward, okay? So um, the station piece is when a planet astrologically, what it represents is that it's very strong. It's, its energy is very strong and it's about to turn retrograde. And so I'm already feeling the effects of this um, Mercury retrograde. I don't know if you all have or not, but what I want to do is I want to share um, some insight about how this Mercury retrograde um, can potentially manifest how you can mitigate this energy. And yeah, let's see if uh, it's that time again. So let's see if we all can survive Mercury retrograde in Taurus. All right. So as usual, I'm just going to show you the chart and there's not really much I'm going to show you other than Mercury retrograde in Taurus, but I, I, that's my habit, right? I still like to, to show you that. So here we go. Uh, Mercury is turning um, retrograde, completely retrograde on the 22nd and uh, at 10 15 a.m so up to this point it's been stationed it means like it's it's just standing still in the sky so it's very very intense and at 10 15 a.m central standard time by the way okay um central standard time mercury will be uh turning uh retrograde now um, ideally, I would add like a you know some some other ins and outs about this Mercury retrograde, but I think the most important piece is that we just had a um, solar eclipse. Okay, uh, last night on the nineteenth, late last night on the nineteenth, and it was about here, the last bit of um, Aries. But now, as of today, the Sun has ingressed into Taurus, and so by the twenty second, the Sun will be here. I think it's like at a degree, a little over a degree. Um, all right. So, you know, the, the, the cool part about this, I think the saving grace might, might, might be is that this Mercury retrograde is, um, sextiling Mars in cancer. So Mars in cancer, you know, it's more of a protective, uh, Mars doesn't move very quickly in cancer. So it might be a little saving grace. Uh, but the biggie here is that Mercury retrograde is conjunct Uranus in Taurus. Now, this is the big one. So let's talk about, you know, what how this uh, Mercury retrograde could potentially show up. So uh, let's start off with uh, what Mercury retrograde, Mercury, let's start with Mercury, and then we'll jump into the retrograde. So Mercury is the essence of, um, you know, travel, communication, moving information from one place to another. Okay, it's Hermes, right? Mercury. Okay. The God Mercury. So it's about communication, travel, technology, because technology is how we, you know, send information from one place to another. Like when your computer crashes, information doesn't go anywhere. Uh, so Mercury is um, very much about the quality of moving, you know, communication information from one place to the other. Uh, it's about moving people from one place to the other. It's about moving ideas from one place to the other. And it likes to move very quickly. Okay. Now, astrologically, Mercury isn't, it's considered a neutral planet. So, you know, if it's hanging out with a malefic like Saturn and maybe um, Mars, then it's probably going to manifest more of those darker qualities. Okay. Shadow qualities. But if it's hanging around with like some you know, uh, um, benefics like Jupiter and um, Venus, then we have like a more, you no know, pleasant type of Mercury, a more playful type of Mercury, more of the light side of Mercury, okay? This one is hanging out, you know, on the cusp of hanging out with, with this Mars, I'm going to set that aside for now, but this one is hanging out, this Mar Mercury retrograde is hanging out with Uranus. And Uranus is such an unpredictable planet. Like it literally represents 
um, you know, instability, sudden shakeups, electrification of it represents lightning and uh, lightning. Like, I mean, you know, so that's kind of the energy that we're we're dealing with. Um, Uranus can also bring opportunity for sudden change. Right. So unexpected change, which sometimes doesn't always have to be a negative thing. I mean, sometimes we need sudden change, like, you know, life poking at us so we can hurry up and, you know, get down to business. Um, so this this energy for me is very much about, you know, the communication piece. OK. And unpredictability, unexpected stuff, <laughs> stuff. Very, very articulate there, Yvonne. Uh, things, situations, experiences to happen. Okay? Now. Mercury retrograde, what we have with Mercury retrograde is that, um, again, the planet isn't actually moving retrograde. And from our perspective, it does. And so astrologically, what that means is that the planet isn't functioning the way it's supposed to function. So it's more difficulty. It has more difficulty expressing its qualities uh, it, like it normally would otherwise. So some of the themes that we see during a Mercury retrograde are issues with, you know, delays, um, uh, mishaps, uh, unexpected events, okay? Uh, you know, the communication going wonky, um, technology going wonky, um, delays in travel, okay, or, or issues with travel. I hope nobody's traveling during, well, of course, some people are going to be traveling during this three weeks. Hello. Uh, but I hope I'm not traveling. I hope you're not traveling either. Anyhow, so, um, but what happens if you do have to travel, right? Well, you just kind of have to travel. You just kind of have to, you know, sign documents, okay, information documents. And, you know, some people say, you know, don't sign major contracts during, rec during, Mercury retrograde because we tend to miss things. Okay. Communication tends to get lost. Information tends tends to get lost. And so if you're going to sign a contract, okay, or, or very important documentation, or if you're going to send an email to your boss, you know, telling them off, you probably <laughs> want to double check everything before you actually send that email or, you know, sign that contract. So information can get a bit um, discombobulated. Um, during Mercury retrograde, right? So communication as well. So relationships tend to, of any sort, whether they're personal relationships, contractual relationships, you know, familiar relationships, friends, uh, sometimes there's a misunderstanding that can happen because the perception of the information is perceived incorrectly. So, uh, and this happens to me all the time during Mercury retrograde. I say something and then my friends come back and say, what would you say? Why would you say that? I'm like, no, 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 that's not what I was saying at all. Let me reword it. Okay. Let me rephrase it for you. So you may come across some of these themes um, with this Mercury retrograde. Now, Mercury retrograde conjunct Uranus is happening in Taurus. Now, Taurus energy, my first house, my first house of self. Huh. So, and I think that's why I'm feeling it a little bit more. Um, Taurus energy is very much about um, the physical experience, right? It represents Mother Earth. It represents the material experience. It represents the physical body. Uh, it represents food, um, finances, money, resources, uh, you know, uh, wealth. It represents um, pleasures, abundance. You know, uh, it represents, you know, the 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 ins and outs of this physical. Um, material experience. Now, from a psycho spiritual perspective, it represents self worth. It represents your ability to manage your self esteem, to really have a good sense of uh, self identity. Uh, it, it manifests in in really how you function as an individual within this physical reality. Um, and so, the darker side of that Taurus energy is it can be greedy. It can be very possessive, and it can be do not ask me to share my tarot cards or crystals with you because I will never share my tarot cards or crystals with you. Just, just saying, okay? Because yeah, I'm a Taurus rising and that's how it works. So, um, so we are very much about our environment, okay? We are very possessive of our things um, and we really like the pleasures in life. Sometimes so much that we can overindulge, like overindulging on, I mentioned this in my video the other day, crumble cookie is the devil. I hate to say, but I love those cookies so much. And this is not like a, an advertisement for crumble cookie by any means, but oh, as Taurus, Taurus out there, you all know, you all know the struggle to not overindulge and stuff like this, right? So um, yeah, so now, we look, you know, we put it all together um, and, you know, people that are going to probably feel this Mercury retrograde more intensely um, are, you know, um, wherever Taurus lands in your chart, number one, and if, again, this is general energy. So if you want to know in depth, 
um, come see me, we'll have a consultation. Um, but people who have Mercury in Taurus, okay, Mercury or Mercury retrograde in Taurus uh, natally, okay, or if it's traveling, whatever house it's traveling through in your chart right now, uh, it's also going to be activated um, more so in that particular house. Mine happens to be in my first house of the self. Um, in my daughter's chart is in her 11th house of goals, dreams, and, you know, um, larger groups of friends. And so, you know, probably miscommunication, misunderstanding may happen there. Um, so yeah, it just kind of depends on where it lands in your chart. But um, if you have also, Mercury retrograde, okay, uh, in your chart, natally, you're probably going to feel this um, wherever it lands more so than not. I have Mercury retrograde on the midheaven right at the top part of my chart. So, yeah, now we know why this is happening to me. <laughs> Anyways, um, okay, so this little Mars piece that, that I said was maybe a potential saving grace, okay, during this Mercury retrograde, is that Mars in Cancer uh, tends to be more protective in nature, okay? Mars doesn't do well in Cancer. Like, it, it's like, you know, trying to swim through Cancer. It's like fire trying to swim through Cancer, and it doesn't get very far. So um, it's a sextile, and sextiles are more supportive by nature as opposed to conjunctions and oppositions and squares. So there may be, you know, some bit of direction or some ability to stop focus and pay attention and say, hmm, maybe I need to like stop and heal first or, or you know, take care of me first or take care of my loved ones before I, you know, go down the Mercury retrograde uh, rabbit hole. Um, Mars and Cancer is very much of a protective energy. So my suggestion is this during this um, Mercury retrograde, how do you survive, right? Um, know that you're probably going to run into some sort of issue pertaining to the qualities of Taurus, which I said was the material experience, right? So money, okay? Um, I don't want to say loss of money, but maybe this misplacing money, okay? Where did it go, okay? Watch your wallets during this time. Watch your purses as well, okay? Property, okay, property is also incorporated with, within um, uh, Taurus. So anything dealing with homes and houses and your property, okay, uh, your finances, right, might go, you know, might have maybe some more expenses than you initially anticipated, okay, something may cost a lot more than maybe what you had planned out for, budgeted for, um, those of you that have to budget, right, um, and so uh, communication for sure is going to be definitely an issue. We may uh, also experience a delay in produce, okay, or um, receiving products. So, you know, during this time, Amazon seems to go, and I'm not picking on Amazon alone, I'm picking on, you know, Etsy and anytime, you know, whatever, wherever you order stuff from, okay. Um, you may find that there's a delay in receiving your product or it may get lost in the mail somehow and then you receive it like three weeks later. So um, these are the type of issues that we're probably gonna run into. Um, from a more psycho-spiritual perspective, you may suddenly feel like there's a lack of, you know, um, uh, what am I going to say? Uh, Self-confidence. Okay. You may all of a sudden feel powerless. Okay. There may be situations where you might feel a little bit more powerless than others um, during this time. Maybe you're more doubtful of your abilities. Maybe you're lacking confidence. Maybe you feel more possessive and jealous. Of course, people can be jealous for sure. Okay. So um, these qualities may also show up um, during this time, but just remember that it's going to pass. It is three weeks. Um, Mercury turns station to turn direct on the 13th of May, so it's just three weeks, and then it turns completely direct on the 16th of May. So that is it, y'all. Woo, all right, so let's hold on. Uh, if you wanna learn more about how this Mercury retrograde can influence your natal chart and your life, um, you can find me at silvermooncounseling.org. And uh, yeah, I'm holding on for this, and hopefully this video recorded just fine because I don't wanna have any more issues with this. Okay, all right, everyone, take care. See you next time. Blessed be.